Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. I've been wanting to try out these digital canvases for a while. I've got a wall that I wouldn't mind having one up on and like to kind of display them. You know, the advantage of these over using a TV or a monitor is they're really set up to show art and photography maybe a little better than a normal TV. Could probably build one out of a good computer display and I might actually try that because the downside is neither of them are as large as I would like. But anyway, I thought I'd bring them in. This is the Canvia and this is the Mural. And both of them really profess to be a digital canvas. They actually come available with them, a fairly extensive selection of artwork. Anyway, I was going to do kind of a box opening and show how they came. And after watching it, I thought, that's, that's pretty boring. I've been running it up in the corner a little bit as I did this introduction. But, you know, we just need to skip that because really what it comes down to is which one do I like the best? Why do I like it? So with that, let's go ahead and talk about what I found and see if uh, I can be of any help if you're thinking about getting one of these. Okay, well, I've had them both set up, got pretty familiar with them. Now, this really is not a tutorial on how to set them up. They're not very complicated. And this is more of a what I like about this versus this, et cetera, et cetera, more of a comparison. I I think they're both overpriced, I think, for what you get. And I think the reason is they're focused more on the access to art that they supply than simply a way to display photographs, which is what the small frames are about. In my case, I am not interested in the art, so that's why I think they're a little bit overpriced. So let's compare the sizes. You'll see that the mural is slightly larger. This one is advertised as 27 inches. It's actually 26 and a half. This one is advertised as 29 inches, and it does measure 29 inches. The display itself is much smaller than that. I've always thought that when it said 27 inches, I thought that would be 27 on the diagonal as most computer displays, TVs, that's how they're measured. But they're actually telling you the overall length of the frame. The diagonal here is actually around 24 inches versus 27. Length here is about 20 and 5 eighths versus 23 and 3 eighths. You'll notice that the mat is slightly smaller here. And overall, you have about a three inch increase in the viewing area. So probably a 15% larger viewing area. Not a big deal, but it's it's noticeable. And in my case, it's still smaller than I want. I might have to figure out a way to mount this in a, a wider frame. I could probably drop this in. I own a frame shop, so I could have my uh, framer find a nice molding. And I might do that because the place I want to put this on the wall, this is going to look a little bit lost. And if this was in about a three inch wide molding, it would probably help fill out the space a little bit. You'll notice that the mat on this one, you might see it on the video, this mat's a little off-white and it actually looks a little more realistic to what a, a good high quality paper mat would look like if you had it cut at a frame shop. This one's a little stark white, it's a little too stark. The, the actual shape of the molding is a little nicer here. It's got a little more dimension to it, but I prefer the mat color here. This looks a little artificial. It's just hard to get any paper that white, but it's not horrible. It's not a, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, just being, I do like this one a little better. They're both 2K displays, uh, 1920 by 1080p. They both have a fairly similar matte finish to them, so there's not any real reflections. They both have good saturation, good color. I think this uh, one is slightly more color accurate. Uh, but they both look good side by side. You'll pick up differences if the same image is on. This one looks a little green in the video. I'm not sure. I think this backlight's a little bit different white balance than this one, but uh, it still looks really good. I still don't have a problem with how the photographs look. And if you set the brightness of the display down a little more than you think you would, they really do look like a photograph sort of hung on the wall. Yeah, they look pretty good. They both have an automatic adjusting feature to the light. So if, the, if you have a room where the light's constantly changing, they'll brighten or darken. Uh, in my case, they're gonna be in a family room, which sometimes you're watching TV and you'd probably want them to dim quite a bit. And in the daytime, there's quite a bit of sunlight. It was really hard to get these balanced. I hope they look pretty good on the video. Uh, I know that they don't look, look nearly as good on the video as they do in person, but they both look much better than I'm seeing on my computer display in the video, but I think that would be expected. There's really no way I can show that. So uh, both frames can be set to be turn off and on on a schedule. It's an interesting way they do it. It actually, you create a daily schedule and it goes in and it puts it in per day. I assume you can cancel it on any given day or override it. You can also have a playlist uh, play on particular date and time. So you can set up different playlists or albums. That's one of them calls them albums, the other playlists. So fairly flexible in that. The Canvia has a setting called Inspired that you can have come on 
if you would like. And I assume they're showing curated art from their collection to kind of inspire you and acquaint you with maybe classic or contemporary art that you otherwise wouldn't be familiar with. So let's talk a little bit about the storage and memory. This comes with eight gigabytes of internal memory. This comes with 16. You have five gigabytes of online storage in the free plan with this one. Uh, four, excuse me, five with this one. If you pay the subscription, subscription, if I can get that out of my mouth, this gives you 20 gigabytes of online cloud storage versus 25. I think one of the challenges that you have with the Canvi is it supports kind of weak at this point. As an example, with the Mural, you can use an SD card or a USB thumb drive if you can adapt it to micro USB up to 256 gigabytes. And if you don't have anything loaded from the cloud, then it will automatically access that SD card. At least that's what I've been told. I'm going to actually wipe this and start at factory fresh and experiment with that. You can access some menu functions by what they call wave technology. You can wave on the side of the, the bottom. And I'll demonstrate that once I get this frame in its final home downstairs in my family room. In this case, it's easy to access the SD card from the frame while it's on the wall. There's a little door that pops open. If they ever get SD card support here, which they promised to have in 2021 and it's still not there, it does have a micro SD card slot and it also has a USB port. If they ever do get that, then you would have to actually take the frame off the wall to change those out. So a lot of flexibility here if you don't want to actually use the cloud service or the internet just to show your own portfolio. I might actually choose to do it that way. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So both of these frames really focus on access to a art library. This one gives you access to over 10,000 images from various museums and other sources around the world. This one is 30,000 images, and they include uh, libraries of various contemporary artists as well that you can have access to through a paid subscription plan. If you don't pay, this one gives you access to about 1,000, and this one gives you access to about a 500 and 50 of the contemporary ones. If you're interested in that part of it, I'm really not real familiar with it. Uh, you do get enough to try it out without paying. You get the full year subscription included when you buy this one, so you can try it out, and then after a year, you can decide whether to pay it. The prices, this runs around uh, $9 a month, and I think you get a discount. Uh, it can, you know, and I'll, I'll actually put them below me as I, as I talk. Discount if you pay by the year, and even more of a discount if you pay by two years. This one you can get for $8.95 a month or around $69 a year. So both of them, if you're planning on using that full time, they're gonna cost you about $70 a year to subscribe to that. There might be circumstances where that really appeals to you uh, because you're more interested in seeing a lot of this art and you want it to vary and you wanna create different playlists. So it's a, it's a cool feature. If you're interested in that with a the mural, they do have a package which includes both the rotating bracket and one year subscription as well, which might be worth trying. So I didn't record the full setup of both frames. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Not too confusing, but basically you download their app and then your app logs it in. I believe the reason for the apps is that's the easiest way that the developers have found to get your device onto a local network. The process is pretty straightforward. You will log on to a network provided by the device. Then the device, then the app will ask you which local network you want to use and it will actually send that information to the device. Once it's on there, it's pretty easy to manage the content. It allows you access to some of the art content. It actually gives you access to your actual library. Basically, you can say which playlist you want loaded onto your device. The Mural app allows you to create a new playlist. And once you create a playlist, you're allowed to add photos to it. This is usually photos found on your phone. It's probably the best way to add photos from your phone photo library. The albums are the reason why you can go to your photo app on your phone and create an album of photographs and then you can just select quickly the ones you want added to that particular playlist. The Canvia app is a little bit different and it allows you to upload to a general library and you will later have to go to the computer to put those into a playlist. One advantage though is if you go to that and add a photo Again, you can go to albums and you can find one and pick one. When you pick it, it's one at a time, but it gives you the ability to do some cropping and some other things. So that's kind of a feature that's unique to the Canvia app. 
Both of the apps let you control your device. You can go and set up your settings. Here is in the Canvi app. And we go to the Mural app. We can go to our Canvas and it'll log on. I can control my brightness here, put it to sleep, and here are my different settings that I can control. So quite a bit of functionality other than the management of your playlists. You'll probably want to do that with the web browser. Let's take a look at that real quick. Here is the web interface for the Canvia app. You'll notice that I have a lot more options here, including pre-made playlists, premium content, which I believe you get all access to for the first year. You can also use NFTs. I have no clue about that at all, but here is my actual collection. As you can see on the Canvia app, I can have my personal playlists. Another thing you can do with Canvia that's kind of nice is you can actually connect it to Google Photos to put the content on. Uh, notice the bottom is uploads, and this is all of the uploads. If I want to actually add content to a playlist, if I go to the playlist, you have to click these little ellipses right here. It's not obvious this is a menu. Uh, this should actually be more of a pop-up, I guess. But if you click here, you'll get a little menu, and then you can upload images, and you can upload those directly into this playlist. Here again, you'll choose your files. This is from anywhere on your computer. Notice I do have photos down here, which is my photo library, but this isn't organized nearly as well as it is on the phone when you use the phone. So I don't, I don't have a way to see actually, for example, any of my albums that are in my photo library. Here's the web interface for the Mural app. Very similar here, I can discover things and this is how you access their art library here. I can browse it. If I want to go to my actual frame settings, I can go over here and I can actually look at my canvases, my playlists. Let's take a look at the playlists. And in this case, any playlist I click on, uh, that sends it to the mural device. If I want to actually access a playlist, I can click on it over here and now I can add photos to it. Very similar at this point, I have the same problem with photos here, but it's, it's a lot better to access photographs from your computer itself. You can access both canvases through the web apps. Uh, here I can just go here and also control a lot of the same settings. So it's just as easy. Uh, it's, for me, it's actually easier to use the web interface than in the phone to actually set it up. Canvia also has a desktop app available both for Windows and Mac. It might be a little more useful. You have a lot more control of your settings. Here you can get to your playlists. And up here, if I go to playlists, you'll notice that I have just lots of playlists that they provide. You, I think it says 419 total. And I think their idea is you can go and just you know do random ones. Here's my personal playlist that are on the Canva app. And here again, I can do various things, including add it to the back queue. The one thing I liked about the Canva is it actually sets up a queue that you can show and you can either remove or add pictures to the queue. I think the software is adequate for either frame. It's not very complicated and I think uh, neither one has a real advantage here. Let me talk a little bit about the image preparation. Uh, both frames are 1920 by 1080 resolution, 2K. And what I found works best is if you send them a picture that's larger than that. So what I've done is created all of the files that go to these frames with an export out of Photoshop and, or I mean out of Lightroom, excuse me, and I set it to make a 4,000 pixel on the long side image. Uh, it doesn't really seem to slow it down. The storage space is irrelevant because you've got multiple gigs of storage online for your photos. So it seems to work out fine. So both frames have the ability to do various things with images that don't fit the standard resolution of 16 by nine. The mural is a little better at it. It has the ability to show it as is, and fit it in the frame. It's got the ability to stretch it, which you know doesn't look very good if you're trying to stretch a ver horizontal, vertical picture horizontally all the way. Uh, really, that doesn't do a lot of good. But the other advantage of the mural is if the image is in a 16 by nine resolution, the mat that you see can be changed. So instead of a black bar, you can have a gray bar like this, which actually looks, I think, maybe a little better, hard to say. You can actually also set it to be white. This one, you can't change the color, it's either black. The other option with this frame is you can fit it to the frame and then animate it. And if you do that, let's just actually show that real quick. Uh, to me, that's really not very successful because I wanna see the image. I don't wanna see it slowly pan by. Um, that might work for a small phone where you can get a little better detail. 
So really the only option on this one is to have the great, the black bars. I will say in my case, it really doesn't matter because as you've seen these images go by, you'll realize that I've done some special work. Not too hard to do. Basically what I do is export them out of Lightroom as a 4,000 pixel on the long side file. I bring those into Photoshop through a droplet out of Lightroom directly. That action basically takes each image and it creates a 19, 16 by nine aspect ratio around the image. It copies the photograph and pastes it into the background and then it blurs it as a drop shadow and a couple of other things. So what I get is this image which is floating on a blurred copy of itself. And the advantage of that is that the black bars are gone and now I've got color coordinated bars. This is a feature that's pretty common in the small digital frames that you buy. I have a loop frame which I have family photos showing in and that's just built in. Not a hard thing to do because in this case I'm really focused on something to display some of my portfolio and my house might have my kids might want one and I'll share the library with them might even be able to sell a frame and give access to a library for people that are interested but it's more of a change once an hour change once a day it's really not de designed I don't think to be more of a slideshow it's really if you set it up right it almost looks like a frame photograph on your wall and so probably you're not going to be doing, you know, hundreds or thousands of family snapshots with this effect. So it wasn't that much work. Uh, in my case, I've got an action done for it. So it's just a matter. It's all automatic. Maybe I'll do a video about that someday. I do have a video about how to use droplets directly out of Lightroom, which is very handy. Uh, check that out up here if that's something you might want to uh, try or be interested in. The other thing I'll mention about the, if you do set it up more as a slideshow, the Canvy is actually better. As you've seen in the video, it has a fairly nice, decent animation of each image sliding in, where this one you'll see the frame go black or white or gray, depending on what the matte color is while it changes. So this isn't very elegant when it changes pictures. Not a problem if you're changing it, you know, I'm probably gonna set mine to change once every 30 minutes or something like that. So that's not a big deal, but if you wanna really show a constant slideshow, the Canvia actually is the winner there. As far as uh, mounting on the wall, uh, this one comes with a little mount like this. Uh, not too bad, some completely worthless screws that unless you're mounting it to a wood wall, uh, no mollies. And if you're mounting it to a stud, if they happen to be lucky enough, this goes on a stud, you'll need screws about an inch longer than this. So you will need to go out and buy some hardware probably to actually mount this one. Uh, those screw-in mollies are pretty handy. This, the, That's what they actually give you here. I don't know if you've ever used these, all, but you just screw those into the wall, then they expand when you screw them. So these work really good in sheetrock. This one gives you a, a little bit more beefy bracket, and it actually includes a, a level in it, so you can get it level when you put it up. Uh, much sturdier. And of course, both have a place to mount them vertically or horizontal. I think it'll be easier to put this one on the wall because they actually protrude. This one's designed so it actually won't sit as tight to the wall. This one, you can't put tight to the wall because the cord's in the way. You know, maybe this bracket holds it out from the wall a little bit, I don't know. But the this one has actually got spacer so it will sit, a, sit out from the wall about it. Oh, maybe not quite half an inch. So like I said, this one wins. I guess you have the hardware you need. This one will mount on a standard VESA visa. <laughs> Is that how you say that? I've never used those. Both either size, there's four brackets. There's a special mount in the back. And so you can buy a, one, a visa mount to put on and you can actually buy a visa rotating mount. So you could rotate this. They both have auto sensing so they can tell if they're vertical or horizontal. One problem with that is you probably have a problem with this cord because it doesn't come out in the middle. So you're gonna have to figure out how to handle that as you rotate the frame. This one's much nicer because of the it comes right out of the center and you can buy a special bracket that they make that's designed to rotate. The other thing about this was nice is the way this is designed, you can wrap any excess cord and hide it in the back of the frame. So you only have enough cord going to the plug that you need. This one here, you're gonna have to find some way to hide all that cord. There is a gap here, so you could probably put it there and kind of tape it in there so it's hidden. Uh, this one's a little more elegant. The only other thing I mentioned that I don't know if you've noticed through the video as this one, when a new picture comes on, you might see it change a little bit. 
So this frame has a thing called ArtSense and then another feature, and I forget the name of it, but basically what it tries to do is make uh, slight adjustments to the backlight so that it optimizes each image based on the content. So basically, if you have a light image, it seems to be dropping that back backlight a little bit. And then if it's a dark image, it kind of brings it up. It's more noticeable in the camera than it is to the eye. I don't know if it's a big deal. I really haven't seen that any of the images on this frame look bad. Uh, on the camera, some of the highs might blow out a little bit. Uh, both of them have a better range of tonality in, to the human eye than it is to the camera that I'm recording with. So just a couple of other things I thought I would mention. Okay, let's talk about price for a minute. Uh, this one is $6.99 and a little more pricey. This one uh, usually you can get on Amazon for $5.27. However, right now, if you go to Netgear, instead of using my link below to go to Amazon, uh, they have a bundle which for $6.99, you get both the frame, the rotating bracket, and one-year membership. So it's about $130 additional uh, value. Now, I have seen that bundle on Amazon on occasion. So maybe you want to pop down with my link and then just see if that bundle is available. Uh, this one, like I said, is typically around $5.27. I've seen ones lower than that, but I think they're refurbished models. As far as the one I would prefer, despite the extra price, I think it has features that I want. Number one, it's larger. Uh, two, even though the memory is less, the fact that I can put in an SD card with a huge amount of memory is uh, real valuable. The fact that I can use the frame with an SD card and probably not even have an internet connection, or at least if I've lost the internet connection, I have the ability to get content onto the frame is really important. I'm a little worried that Canvia down the road because of, it seems they're struggling. Like I said, they promised SD card support over two years ago, and they've been talking about it since it came out and it's still not there. I'm a little worried that down the road, they're gonna go belly up and there won't be a way to access the frame anymore. So you'll be stuck with whatever's on it or even worse, uh, could be that it'll just be bricked and you can't even do anything with it at all. Um, since this is a Netgear company, I'm a little more confident, even though I think both companies are selling a product that probably doesn't have huge market appeal in the way they're designed and selling them. I think they'd be a lot better off trying to sell them as a digital frame and worry more about the users accessing their own content rather than this access to this these art libraries. I, I, I don't know why they think that's so fantastic. And maybe I'm wrong, but... It's a nice little feature, but it's far it's far less important, I think, to most buyers than it is to just see their own work. A lot of people want these digital frames, and they don't want the little 10-inch ones. They want something bigger. So I think both companies are kind of missing the mark there. Well, I have my mural canvas on the wall. Uh, does look a little lost in this space. I think if I put my uh, molding on, I'm thinking about it, it's about four inches wide, and it actually projects the frame out a little further. Will look a little better. Might even put a pair of them up someday, I don't know. I do have a couple of the smaller frames. This is the Aura, this is the Loop. I'm not sure how good the camera is picking up the photographs on them, but these are the little 10 inch frames to give you a comparison on size. Uh, so far I really like it. There's a few things I would mention. Uh, the cord is kind of maybe too white. It doesn't show up on the camera real well. And it's that kind of braided material, so it's really kind of hard to get it straight. Uh, I'm gonna have to come up with some way to hide it, I might have to put, you know, you know a molly box in, in the down and run it up because it looks kind of tacky to have the cord run up like that. I did mention the SD card. You do have to have the internet to set up both frames. You can't do it. When you turn this on from scratch, there's a little uh, QR code and you've got you've to use the app to get it going. Once it's going, it will read the SD card. You can manage to get it from the, the menu on the frame. And I think if there's no pictures stored in the frame from the cloud, I think it will default to that SD card. I couldn't quite verify that, but at least you can get to it. This frame does have some ability to control it, unlike the Canvia, which is totally done by the app, the web browser, or I did find the Canvia has a desktop app, which is a little better than the web browser to control it. Anyway, there's a sensor both here and here, which is the bottom of the frame. Um, I, I swipe there, so it lets you go from picture to picture. Um, you can see that uh, it's not super sensitive, it's a little finicky. If I swipe up now, it'll give me, um, if I swipe up, it gives me the menu. As you can see, it's, it's on browse. If I go across, you can see here's my SD card that I could go to if I wanted to. Uh, 
I think I just swipe up now and I can say, yeah, I want to use Mural 2. And I think that will uh, let me select that one. Uh, these are the same images, but now it's reading it off the SD card. There's other things you can do with the menu. Uh, you can change your Wi-Fi. Uh, you can do a few other things, but limited functionality, but it's uh, at least some functionality. And so the frame is usable even if there's no network, as long as you've had it set up and established using the app at some point. Other thoughts, uh, not too many. The little bubble in the thing is not real accurate. You'll want to get a better level. The, I did find the screw mollies that they give you. The instructions say to drive them in with a hammer. Please don't do that. That's not how those work. Uh, they actually, you need a hole. And if you buy better ones from the hardware store that are made out of nylon, it will pre-drill its own hole. These, I tried that and it doesn't work. You've got to at least have a hole big enough for the thing to get started. So you might end up buying hardware for both of them, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the colors are good. I think the quality is good. Maybe not coming across on the video as well as it does in person, but it's pretty cool. I'm probably going to do a couple more videos about uh, these small frames. Like I said, this is the Aura. This is the Loop. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Both of these are being shared right now. I've got a, my daughter and their family. They have a Loop and their pictures are also coming to my Loop. My wife's daughter and their family, uh, their pictures are coming to her loop or her aura. Uh, so I'm going to review those and I'm probably going to do four or five other brands. Try to find out which one's really the best or what features each one offers so that if you're thinking of one of these, uh, might give you some help. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, just hit me with a comment. Make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button. The like button helps me out quite a bit. And until next time, see ya.